there are some really useful hidden tricks in Power BI, and these are a few of my favorites. Let's go. So first tip, set yourself up with a measures table. It keeps your measures all nicely organized together, like you can see here. So all you do is you click on the enter data button at the top of your screen. This creates an empty table. Just give it a name like my measures or calculations. Okay. And load. That will then create an empty table for you to create your measures in. Then it appears underneath the my measures table, but why it's alphabetically different. What do you do to get this measures table to show to the top? Well, it's pretty straightforward. Once you've added a measure, so let's add a measure in here. I'll call it measure five. Uh, equals the number five. Okay, nothing too fancy. Once you've done at least one measure, you can then get rid of column one. So you can delete it. And delete. And once it's gone, all you do is you minimize this screen and maximize this screen and your measures will always pop to the top. They are now proper measures tables. Second tip, when you've got lots of measures inside your measures table, you can group them into folders. So you can't do that here. You have to go to the modeling view screen, okay? And in here, if I click on one of my measures, and I say this is going to be in a folder called folder A and I press enter within a few seconds. There we go. Measure one is now in folder A and I can now drag measure two into folder A. And I can say, okay, measure three, that's going to be called folder B. Enter. That'll create a folder, subfolder in there and you can drag measure four into folder B. And in this view, you can also drag measures between tables. So I can drag this measure up into folder A or even just into my measures table if I wanted to. I'll also go to my calculations and you could drag measure five down. Then when you go back to this view, here's your folders. Okay, next one. Custom formatting. So over here, I have some badly formatted numbers. These are my actual, this is my actual measure. There's my actual cost. That's sitting in this little table here. And if I click on it, little tip, if you want your measure to look bigger, control mouse wheel, you can zoom in. No one shows you that little trick. Um, and this box, this is the magic box. If I want these to be formatted with brackets for negatives and rounded to zero decimals. Let's do this. You can actually type in this box. So hash comma hash zero semicolon. And then my negatives are going to be bracket hash comma hash zero, close the bracket, semicolon, and my zeros are going to display as dashes. Okay. Press enter, give it a few seconds. It locks it in and then your numbers will be formatted. Okay, it's not quite the same as the Excel number formatting. Unfortunately, you can't do underscore blank to get the positives to line up with the negatives, but it's not too bad. Okay, so how do we get the negatives to turn red? Because in Excel, you can just simply go uh, put the red in the uh, formatting. So with this, you have to use conditional formatting. So I'm just gonna go actual costs, conditional formatting font color. And then this crazy formatting box really annoys me. Um, so we're going to go rules based on actual costs. I want to say if it's less than zero, turn red. You come in here, there is no less than box. Really frustrating. Okay, so what you do is you pretend that doesn't exist. Okay, that's it. You just pretend it doesn't exist. And you say is less than zero number, you pick red and you click OK. And the red negatives will then turn red. Strange that that's how they've set it up, but that's how it works. OK, last little tip for now. 
um, I want to consolidate multiple sheets from an Excel file. So let me just open up the file. I'll just show you what it looks like. Let's pretend somebody's done a horrible thing and produced an Excel file with a budget per month, but every different month is on a different sheet. Okay. Please never set your budgets up like this, but let's just say this has happened or this is how it gets produced from the source system. We want to consolidate it all. Okay. Right. So what do we do? Well, we go get data from Excel and we go to that file. And this is the first of these little tricks is that what you're tempted to do is actually load the individual sheets by ticking them all. Okay. But that loads all these separate queries. And we've only got sort of nine months here. When they add extra months, you have to come back in and add those in. Don't do that. Okay. If you want to consolidate multiple sheets, the trick is this. You right click on the actual folder, which is the file name, and transform that. Okay. That's the trick. Once you've got this, all I need is these two columns. And I can right click remove other columns. And then you can just click this expand option. And here we have it. Okay. I'm then going to use column from examples. So right click, add column from examples. This is the budget for 2014. So I'll go 01 Jan 2014. Press enter. It then spills down and works it out 01 Feb. And this is the important bit. Okay. You must read this formula. Not ideal to be hard coding in 2014, but in this scenario, we're all good. I'll call it date and click OK. So here's my date column, and I'm going to turn that into a date. And I'm even going to round, uh, transform it to month end. So right click, transform, month, end of month. Beautiful. This column is cost center code. And this one is the budget. Okay, and I can just select, I want date, then I want cost center, then I want budget. Right click, remove other columns, and the order I clicked is now the order they display. So let's show you one more little tip with Power Query. Uh, to do with data types, let's say you have unidentified data types, and let me zoom in a little, zoom in a little bit using Control Shift Plus. Okay, if you ever need to zoom in in Power Query, Control Shift Plus is your friend. A um, couple of things. You can go Control A and then under the Transform tab, click Detect Data Type. And hopefully it'll do a good job of guessing what you want them to be. Saves you do them all individually. Uh, the other little one I wanted to show you is this. If you have a couple of columns you want to make a particular type, I've con used Control to select them. Keep your finger on Control and click ABC123. Notice it deselects this column now. It never used to do that, but it does. So you just have to click on it one more time. And then you say text, and both columns are now changed in one go. Okay, you click on date, that could be date, and this is going to be decimal number. So that's some of my hidden gems. I hope you found them useful. If you did, please subscribe, leave me a comment, leave me a like, and we'll catch you later on. Thanks.